Greetings. My name is Juan Camilo Sainz, anesthesiologist of the Universidad del Valle. I belong to the developer group of the total intravenous anesthesia application created by Dr. David Ramirez. And below, I will present a case performed under total intravenous anesthesia using the application. Before starting this case, I would like to thank Dr. Vargas, a professor at the Universidad del Valle, who provided his collaboration during the course of the case. Continuing with the case, the patient corresponds to an elderly male without relevant antecedents, with a diagnosis of nasal polyps, who will undergo endoscopic nasal surgery. It was decided to give general anesthesia with a total endovenous technique guided by the total intravenous anesthesia application. For this, we used two drugs with a sensitive half-life in a favorable context for awakening, such as propofol at a dilution of 5 mg per milliliter and remifentanil at 8 micrograms per milliliter. How do we relate these dilutions? First, we dilute a 2 mg ampule of remifentanil in 250 milliliters of saline solution, and for the propofol in a butatrol, we add 20 milliliters of 10% and 20 milliliters of normal saline solution in a gentle way, avoiding bubbles. Below, we can see the patient's vital signs at the beginning of the procedure with a heart rate of 60 beats per minute in a blood pressure of 196 over 180 milliliters of mercury. It should be noted that he had neither a history of a diagnosis of hypertension nor any medication. It was considered that this figure was not associated with target organ injury and anesthesia was continued without canceling the patient given the surgical opportunity in our area and control blood pressure figures during the anesthetic act. It should be also noted that this measure can be highly debated and we will not discuss it in this video. Next, we enter the patient's data by clicking on each of the parameters and type it in, in the lower right keyboard of the screen. And finally, pressing continue. We appreciate this screen in which if we click on any of the ones on the left, the available drugs will appear. In this menu, we choose the remifentanil according to the pumps to avoid errors. We can calculate the concentration by clicking on the calculator or directly entering the concentration in the box. In this case, that is 8 micrograms per milliliter as agreed. In the lower part, we have models. In this scenario, we choose the Minto model with the comment of the correction on the lean weight according to the James equation. At the end, we press the green button, getting a new window in which we can adjust the induction time. In this case, because we have an older adult, we adjust it in three minutes or more, avoiding the cardiovascular adverse effects of the drug by passing it in a very fast bolus. And on the other hand, we define the patient's inductions and maintenance targets, which for this case, we decide five in three nanograms per milliliter. We press the green button and we get the infusion rates at which they are in order and we can also see for how long and how much volume will be infused. Therefore, we proceed to put the first two data in a pump that can give secondary infusions before the primary one, and in this way, send an infusion first, and at the end, automatically continue with the next infusion. We do it in the channel that we have destined for the remifetanil. In this pump that we have in three ways, we repeat the same process with the propofol. We agree that in the first menu, we can change the concentration of the drug. In this case, at five 
milligrams per milliliter and choose the model that appears as a brief description of it and always use the models that we are familiar with. Finally, we approve with the green button getting a new window in which we can choose the induction time. In this case, it will be one flash bolus and something that I forgot to mention is that you can choose the concentration effect of the drug that by default will be found for the redundancy always in that CE option. Now we choose the targets. For this case, there will be 5 and 3.5 micrograms per milliliter for intubation and maintenance respectively. As we continue, we will observe the infusions and proceed to write them down on the pump and we will take into account that the initial bolus will pass through a syringe and we will load it with the set concentration and let it we it will be administered quickly and the infusions will continue. Now we start the induction. For this, on the monitor, we appreciate an initial bolus of 80 mg of propofol, which we had previously loaded into a syringe, and an initial remifentanil infusion of 267 milliliters to reach the target of 5 nanograms milliliter for 3 minutes. Therefore, for this, we have to put the application in real time that is carried out as we see it on the screen. Activating the option on the left, the name of the drug, okay? We see that as soon as we activate it in real time, we must give the first propofol bolus and activate the remifentanil pump. Later, at approximately two minutes, the application through an alert tells us to start the propofol pump at 131 milliliters which will be equivalent to 9 mg kilogram per hour. You can see this value under each infusion and this infusion will last for more than 10 minutes. This means that for more than 10 minutes, you will not have to manipulate the infusion pump. While all of this is happening, we will be located at the bedside of the patient ventilating because we are proposing a sequence that is not rapid intubation. As the pump we are using has a secondary option, renifentanil, when reaching the, the indicated volume of three minutes, will be automatically changed to the next infusion that corresponds to 51.3 milliliters per hour, equivalent to 0 0.09 micrograms per kilo per minute for the proposed target of 3 micrograms per milliliter. Then, during this period of time, we will appreciate that the fall of the PCI index where the patient will be intubed. Well, as we observe in real time and five minutes after the start of induction, the patient is already intubated and in the process of fixing the tube, we don't need to make any changes to the infusion pumps so far. Now, I take this moment to show you some functions of the main screen of the application, where to the right of each model of the drug name, in blue for renifentamil and yellow for propofol, the current concentration in the CE is observed below on the green line. From these models, the remaining time of the infusion and if we press each of the models, we can see the following infusions of each of these drugs at 15 minutes, indicating a change of the propofol pump infusion, for which we proceed to perform the same. However, we show that the PCI index stands towards the lower limit, for which we adjust the propofol target from 3.5 to 3 micrograms per milliliter. We do this by pressing the target option. The keyboard appears in the lower right part. We put three micrograms per milliliter and a time option appears. However, when you stop the level, this serves us 
because the body cannot be asked to metabolize the drugs faster or slower. Subsequently, we press concentration effect, we, we refer to that CE and immediately tell us to stop the infusion pump and then it started at 87.8 milliliters per hour, which is equivalent to 6.27 milligrams per kilo per hour. During this period of time, the surgical instrument prepares the patient for surgery. Later, we show that the patient presents high blood pressure values similar to those at admission with a normal PCI index, a heart rate of 50. Therefore, we decided to increase the opioid dose of 4 nanograms per milliliter in two minutes. We can see that doing this process presents an error and I press stop diffusion of fentanyl. However, this can be corrected by clicking on the words that say more and then on the menu that appears. Press undo and we return to the screen before the erroneous change. Now we press the target option. The side menu appears, we place 4 nanograms per milliliter and press concentration effect. It will immediately calculate the infusion values to reach the value, which we proceed to put it in the infusion pump. As we can see, after two minutes, it would indicate the change of the infusion for a lower one, but I'm going to exit the application to show you that even sends notification when the application or the cell phone are blocked. Well, after more than 15 minutes of this change from remifentanil 4 nanograms per milliliter, the patient continued with high blood pressure figures with a PCI index at anesthesia levels. The heart rate did not show any change in the previous increment to remifentanil, for which reason we decided to inc increase the concentration in CE of remifentanil again to 4.5 nanograms per milliliter with the aim of reducing the patient's sympathetic activity and control of blood pressure, because in nasal endoscopic surgery, better building control with adequate blood pressure figures is documented. Therefore, we press target again. We put 4.5 nanograms per milliliter for a time of two minutes and press concentration effect. It calculates us immediately to change the infusion to 110 milliliters per hour for two minutes and later go to 74.4 milliliters per hour, which is equivalent to approximately 0.14 micrograms per kilo per minute. Well, maybe I have ignored other medications that I have put to focus on infusions of remifentanil and propofol. These correspond to the start of induction, a neuromuscular blocker of intermediate action, which in this case was recordinine in a dose of 0.6 milligrams per kilo to assist the intubation in addition to the docaine 1 milligram per kilo intravenously as a codate in the intubation and at the end of the intubation 4 milligrams intravenous of hexamethasone was administered. Bear in mind that the analgesic requirements of this surgery are low because the surgeon performs an infiltration with local anesthetics plus amifetanil about the pump. Finally, we can observe that after almost 30 minutes of the last modification of propofol that we dropped to a level of 3 micrograms per milliliter, it indicates us to change the infusion. I highlight this 
because I want to show that the changes are not so frequent to be all the time as well stuck with a pump. In the video, it seems that they were frequent because I have taken the sequence of all the changes and I have put them in order so that you see the changes that I have made over time during this anesthetic act. Well, we observed that the PCI index is towards the lower limit, so we decided to adjust the propofol by decreasing the concentration in, this, in the concentration effect. However, as we observed, I was wrong. I made a change to the remifentanin model. So we already know that this can be corrected by pressing the word more and then in the menu that appears we press undo. Now, if we make the change on the propofol module, lowering the level to 2.5 micrograms per milliliter, let's agree that we press target, mark the desired target and then press concentration effect. Therefore, it tells us that we must stop the infusion pump for a certain time and then restart at 62.6 milliliters per hour. Well, we have already been in surgery for about two hours without making any changes. At the moment, and the next changes in the infusions are in remifentanil for more than an hour and in propofol in approximately 40 minutes. However, we continue with the PCI level towards the lower limit with the vital signs unchanged for which we decided to adjust the level of propofol to 2.3 micrograms per milliliter, for which we press again on the propofol model, then press targets, mark 2.3 micrograms per milliliter and press concentration effect. The following changes appear in the propofol infusion pump. We shall stop the pump, then restart it at 57.4 milliliters per hour, which is equivalent to 4.1 milligrams per kilo per hour. Well, since time has advanced and we continue with the surgery, we have already had approximately 169 minutes of surgery, an approximate of more than two and a half hours. We decided to adjust the propofol level gain for a concentration effect of two micrograms per milliliter because the PCI index continues towards the lower limit with no change in vital signs and with this dose of two micrograms per milliliter in concentration effect of propofol of 4.5 nanograms per milliliter of remifentamil in concentration of fat will leave the maintenance until the patient's intubation. Well, because we have already finished the entire surgery procedure after 200 minutes of surgery and we proceed to extubation. So for this, I'm going to show you the patient's excavation plan on the screen, in which we are going to have three very important aspects. The first one changes the remifentamil target from 4.5 nanograms milliliters to 2.5 nanograms milliliters in order to reduce the unwanted reflexes, such as coughing during excavation. Secondly, we observe that decreasing time, if we stop the infusion of propofol, that is for a target of two micrograms per milliliter and how long it takes to reach a microgram per milliliter where we preceded that it can be the awakening of the patient according to their behavior during anesthesia. And finally, we perform the reversal of neuromuscular relaxation according to the TOF. 
In this case, we did not have to reverse the patient. It should be clarified that the patient was administered approximately 10 to 20 minutes before extubation, morphine, 2 mg, and in the middle of the surgery, dipiron, 2 grams. As we clearly observed on the screen, we made the change of remifentanil 2.5 nanograms per milliliter as already we have previously mentioned and we follow the instructions given. Then what we do is evaluate the decremental time of propofol. We have this by pressing the word more, a menu will appear, and in this menu we are going to press the decrement time and mark one microgram milliliter. A new screen appears where a time appears. Here we are going to press real time, which means that if we stop it right now, how long will it take to reach a microgram per milliliter? This gives us a result of five minutes, for which we decide to suspend propofol immediately. In this period of time, the patient's airway is evaluated to clean or remove a possible Q-strange object that may remain during the surgery and it was also aspirated to avoid secretions. Then, it tells us to restore the remifentamil pump at 40.9 milliliters per hour. We give the order to the anesthesiology assistant who must be trained to change the volumes of the pump and we proceed to extubation. When the patient is conscious, as we can see in the following images, the patient has a quiet awakening without cough reflexes and without complications. Well, I hope you understand the case. It should be noted that it is not a perfect surgery setting and much less the perfect anesthesia because there are many errors from safety, such as infusion pumps that must be as close to the anesthesiologist and visible all the time. However, the layout of this operating room made this process difficult and among other re that can be recognized during the video. Thank you very much.